Imagine a game engine that doesn't need developers. The world magically creates itself based on a few words you string together and dynamically adapts to your actions. Well, you don't need to imagine because it's already here and it's gonna change game development drastically. And we got it before GTA 6. Google just dropped the first AI game engine called Genie 3, which takes in text prompts and creates an interactive world, as they call them, in real time. I thought it was going to take a few years to get to this point. I'm, I'm not going to lie. What's insane is that it actually reacts to the player's inputs in real time. So if you press right, it'll move the character to the right and perform a certain action. It runs at an amazing 24 FPS at 720p, which isn't a whole lot compared to what we're used to, but considering that a few months ago it didn't even run in real time, that is insanely fast. But what makes this model different from all the other ones? And should game developers be worried that they might be replaced? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's three key features that make Genie 3 stand out as the first AI game engine. Previously, the AI-generated real-time worlds could only really run for a few seconds before forgetting literally everything about the game world. This means you couldn't even go back to redo something because it just wiped it out of existence. And games are all about making the player feel immersed with the world. They do this through music, props, story, but most importantly, giving the player freedom. But with Genie 3, they've managed to have the experience last several minutes. They call it the interaction horizon, which is so corpo, but okay. For example, in this painting scene, not only can you control the character, but it will remember the paint strokes on the wall, even after turning away from it. This opens up so many possibilities because the world isn't just interacting, but evolving. Which leads me to the second point, that you can change the game world while in the game. Normally in games, developers have to account for literally everything. That's why making one is so hard. Oh, the player can move this way? Make sure they can't pass this barrier. Oh, it's 3.59 p.m.? Start a rain shower and make the car harder to control. That's why it's taking forever for GTA 6. Because they have so many things you can do and they have to programmatically account for every single situation and have zero bugs while running at a stable 60 FPS at 4K. Heck, even the small desktop cat cafe game I made took a whole year. Because during development, we would notice a ton of bugs from actions players could make that we never even thought was possible. I in the description. But with Genie 3, they introduced promptable world events where you can change anything about the current world state. The weather, adding a jogging chicken man, or even triggering NPC dialogue. So now you'll be able to go on a date with your original character waifu in the comfort of your own home. Wait till this gets to VR. One dude already left his wife for an AI. Kind of lame, I'm not gonna lie. It'll be like Wally, -E. great movie, where you're just zoned out living in a fantasy all day and just being a degenerate IRL. So the line between reality and simulation is about to get very blurry. But enough doom and gloom. The third and largest point about how this genie in the bottle is gonna change up games forever is SEMA, or Scalable Instructable Multi-World Agent. <laughs> I got that one. Even if you have these immersive worlds, the experience still needs to be curated. Even in a game, game design is arguably one of the most important elements that will make or break it. Even if you have the best art, the coolest mechanics, or an amazing plot, it means nothing if the game is unintuitive, if it's not cohesive, and if it's not fun. Now this is a part which has received less focus of in the AI space, ironically, but Google has been training something that could be the solution to this problem. They trained Sema, an AI agent that basically traverses the world in a game. It, it plays the game. Now, while it was trained to do simple tasks, that would take 10 seconds or less, it can still interact with the UI, move the player, and even dodge obstacles. All it needs is the images on the screen and the natural language prompt by the user to do something. They've already put Sema in Genie and had it complete a set of different goals, like approaching this mammoth in the museum. I wonder if it's gonna come alive soon. <laughs> However, Genie isn't really aware of Sema right now or what it's thinking. Instead, it adapts to the player's actions, which Sema generates depending on the initial prompt. That could mean smarter NPCs, changing the player's movements or animations depending on the player's input, or even automated game testing. Eventually, they'll have independent AI models that can play games, get information about the games to understand what's intuitive, what's frustrating, what's boring, and use that with Genie to create adaptable worlds that make sense and are fun for a video game. Now, of course, there are limitations to Genie 3, like limited spaces, interactions with other NPCs, noise, and it still has pretty limited interaction duration. But what does this mean for game developers? And are they gonna be obsolete in a few years? <laughs> no, I don't think so, at least. 
games are something that's really unique. It's a combination of so many moving pieces, art, story, level design, user interfaces, all perfectly combined to provide the player with a one-of-a-kind experience. And it's really hard to get that right. Even if an AI could come up with a million possible story outcomes, do you really think it could recreate the emotions while playing something like Undertale? When someone makes a game that isn't slop, when they care and pour their emotions into it, you can feel it. <laughs> That's gonna dip my retention. Even with AI art, no matter how similar it looks, there's just something about knowing that a human made it. It's purely psychological. Humans are always looking to connect with other humans and be part of a social circle, since it's in our nature, extremely evident in social media. What we will see is a flood of slop. Generic, badly curated experiences quickly made with no regard for the art itself. And people aren't stupid. They notice when something is made without intention. And probably they'll be a worse job market, if that's even possible. It's up to the developers to adapt, maybe even use AI tools to make their creation process faster, ironically, come up with better ideas and make more engaging games. But this isn't the only technology that's gonna manhandle the game industry and game developers. I actually made a whole video describing all of the other cool tech that's coming out. You should watch it and be prepared. Adios.